been talking about Gestalt theory. And in looking at Gestalt theory, as well as some of the things we've talked about in class, we talk about how we as humans try to look for patterns. Right? We try to simplify information so that we can process it quickly and more easily so we can much more quickly get a sense of what's going on in our environment. Now, when it comes to imagery, which we've talked quite a bit about, we happen to do that a lot. We've seen a lot of illusions. Right? We've looked at uh, how it works with Gestalt theory and how that can be applied to designing an interface. One area that you also want to remember that it makes a difference in is with text and language, because we tend to forget that. Now, why is that important? Do you have to use text when you're designing things? Yeah, the answer is yes. Right, so you also want to pay attention to how we deal with things such as text. Because even with text, we still are seeking some sort of way of processing information faster. So we're still seeking this visual structure. Especially in text is where you really start seeing how we really process things, information that has a nice visual structure much more easily and a lot faster than a big blob of text. So I want you to think about when you go to a web page you can think about some of the things we did earlier in the semester. When you go to a web page, do you start reading every word? No. What do you do? Yeah, you're scanning to see what it is that you want to accomplish. All right? So you want to be able to find what you are focused on as quickly as possible. That's pretty much what we all do. That's really natural. That's what we do in the environment when it comes to other types of visual stimuli. We do the same thing with text. We are looking for relevant information and we want to find it quickly. So when it comes to looking at text, we want to remember that if we can make it more structured and more terse, in other words, you know, sh shorter, more to the point, when we are designing how we are going to convey information, it's really going to make it easier for people to quickly and easily scan that information and understand the message you are trying to provide them. Let's look at a quick example. Here, we have an example where it's the exact same information. Now, quickly glancing at it, which is, it, which is easier for you to be able to quickly glean information from? Second. The bottom one. Why is that? What are some of the differences? It's formatting broken up into lines. It's broken up into lines. You have formatting. You have, I'm sorry? You have less, less, excuse me, less text. Remember, do we like to read? No. Nope. Unless it's a really good novel. Right, it has less text. We have, you know, we, we have labels. It's very clear what the labels are. So this, much easier for us to understand. Now, if we are designing, say, a web page to display this information, which do you think is faster for us as IT people? To code. Yes, the top. Okay, blurb of text, there it goes. This can be a big pain in the patookie. All right, has anyone tried designing a web page where you're trying to format text like that? It should be so simple, right? All right, you get it beautiful in one browser, and what happens when you open it in another one? Yeah, no. So it much harder for us as IT people. It can be very frustrating. But think about how much better this is for your users. It's going to make it a better experience for them and more likely that they're going to use your product and go to your website and glean the information that they need from that. And then, of course, if you ever have to use it also as a user, you'll be very happy that you took care of it. So again, remember that even with text, we do deal with visual structure. But let's look at a couple of other examples. Because we actually have this everywhere. So if we take a look at the top, at the top up here, this is a financial statement. Sometimes people don't think of financial statements as text, but I have some surprising news. It is, even though they're numbers. 
So I want you to look at these. These both provide the same information. Now I want you to tell me very quickly, what is the monthly payment? Yeah, 18, 40, 50. Who scanned to try to figure that out? This beautiful, beautifully formatted side over here. No. Yeah, no. Who, did, who, who looked at this one? Pretty much everybody, I would hope. Unless you were really being intellectual and trying to compare them. So we even naturally tend to go to what's going to be easier for us. Most of you, what you probably did, you probably looked at that, you probably just scanned this first one here and said, oh, no, go to the next one. Oh, much easier. And you probably didn't even have that as a conscious thought where you were actually hearing your voice. So, again, here we have some nice structure, makes it very easy to scan. Now, there are other things that you want to keep in mind when it comes to visual structure and making things easier to read. Let's take a look at these bottom examples. These provide the exact same information. Which is easier for you to understand and figure out what you want to do? This one, this one on the right. So let's take a look at what are some of the differences. Some of them we've already talked about. So what are some of the differences between them? Right, there's less text and there's not all this repetitive stuff. How to renew your driver's license in person. How to renew your driver's license by mail. How to renew your driver's license by internet. We want to read all that? No. Look how nice and concise it is over here. One, it's not in a sentence. Because remember, this is not a research paper, right, or a newspaper article. You are trying to convey information. Someone goes to this website to accomplish something. So we're getting rid of all of this, what's called repetitive noise. If you don't need it, as long as it doesn't make things ambiguous, then remove it. Now, there is one thing I want to mention, though. You want to be careful when you do this. Because since we are the ones who are designing these interfaces, sometimes there's information there that we already know that we remove that may not be obvious to the user. So you do want to be very careful about that. One of the things I always recommend is after you remove all the information, show it to someone who does not work on that project. See if they can figure it out quickly and easily. It's the best way to do things. All right, is there anything else that you noticed that's a difference between them? Okay, I heard several people and couldn't understand any of you. What else? All right, so there's less noise. This is just too long. This is much shorter. Here, there's very little space between the bullets. Here, there's more space. It makes a nice, clear delineation. It makes it easier to scan. Sometimes people worry that they have too much white space. Oh, wait, there's a white space. I need to put something there. How many of you have seen web pages where there's like, like not even a pixel of white space? Yeah, we've all seen that. And we're like, oh, this is too much. So you want to also remember, you want to use white space appropriately. Now, of course, if you have a colored background, it's still called white space, even if it's not white. But that's pretty much the idea. And of course, the other thing, which is kind of obvious to us, the things that are links are different colors. And it tends to be a fairly consistent standard color that's used on the web. 